to what Aisling is doing. So Aisling's going to be down. I'm going to be working from a uh, uh, crossface grip instead of an underhook. I will say, when you can establish uh, an, an underhook, whenever you can get your partner's arms over their head like this, always look to do so. In any pinning scenario, it's going to be a good thing when they're, you're in like mal side control, they pin and their, their arms are flailing over their head or to the side. It's just mechanically a weak, uh, feeble position. So here, as I'm working, I push in, they push back. I immediately come in. No, starting off, it's going to be very common that we can just snag upper body position. However, the better you get, the more common it is to battle for the upper body position. On both sides, we're using this concept of battling for the upper body position. So from there, add in a high, low pummel or low and kind of pummel in for an underhook. You have, you have two options, they're both good. I fake high, I go low, I pummel in. I go low, I go high, and I pummel in an underhook. So from here, what I'm gonna show is I'm gonna show from the cross face. So I pummel in, and no, anytime I have an underhook, let's just say for whatever reason, Aislinn's a stud, she bridges, she gets her arm back. Here, from there, I immediately try to transfer it to a cross face. So again, that's why underhooks are generally better is because the backup plan is gonna be cross face. This is always a good fallback. So from here, I pull Aislinn into me. I start with isolating the near side uh, hip space. Sorry, I start by isolating Aislinn's leg by pinching my knees together and controlling the near side hip space. From there, as I begin to go across, I slide not myself, I'm just so I can guys can see. I slide my knee to my elbow like so. It's very common starting off that I'm gonna pull my head back and I'm gonna be working from here. If at any time I feel like I'm getting pushed to this side, I will shoot out some bridge and kind of cross face. I will sneak this arm underneath, I will shoot this leg out, and I will bring my weight back, reinforcing my weight placement over my elbow and trying to get my elbow and my knee as close as possible together. So anytime, if they're really strong and bigger than you, make sure you have a reinforcement here. They some bridges uh, with the crossings. Here, it should be a difficult thing. From there, she moved my head, so I'm gonna be in trouble. So the reason why, if you need to, we look away, she bridges, and it should be difficult. Now from here, as I begin to go across, I slide that knee in, and I pull my foot up. I'm gonna to go to a piking motion from this square stance. So I'm gonna get my knees off the ground and I'm gonna pull up like so. From there, I use my T-Rex arm right in the hip. I walk, 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 walk. From there, I need an elbow connection and I start sliding this to the mat. However, Aislinn's the world championship grappler. She blocks like so. From there, immediately, I take the underhook occupying the inside position on the upper body. From there, it's important to note, I'm talking to you guys, but very realistically, I'm basing it on my head and I'm planting you know, my head to the mat. Right now while I'm talking, I'm not gonna do that. No, anytime you're pinning and my two hands are occupied, it's very likely you're basing uh, with your head. This will seem a lot more risky when you're newer on to your grappling career. It's very common, you're going against bigger people. You pike your hips, they push you that way. You're gonna need to, Get used to basing out wide, like so, maybe not alleviating the cross face, basing out so you don't just get knocked over. Because again, you're taking away a little base as you walk. If Aislinn was a 250 pound man who could bench press 400 pounds, it's gonna be a common reaction, right? So get used to, you know, fallbacks. It doesn't work out, they're stronger, they're bigger than me. I post, and then I'm working back to my T-Rex arm. So T-Rex right here, I slide it. My goal, my objective is getting that knee to the mat. Ideally, whenever Ace was blocking, there's gonna be inside space to take my cross face grip. Now from here, we still have to deal with the problem of freeing up the foot. There's a couple different options. The best one, or the easiest one, starting off the bat, is piking, getting a butterfly hook in, inserting it, and throwing this and pulling my feet up to the buttocks area. So 
even though you can't, get an easy half guard escape. The other option is here, Aislinn has been working on her thigh master. There's no way I could clear this. Her hips are turned out. The second I go here, she turns her knees in this direction. There's no way I can find it. So what I do here is I slide my knee across the hip line, and now I'm gonna jack up her arm in this direction and go head over head. From there, as I jack her arm up, I then readjust to the mounted position. So, again, a lot of details there. Uh, you're newer, you're thinking about the most common, simplest reaction. You're thinking about, my hips are in the air, I lock base. If my partner bridges, what am I gonna do? So get used to facing out wide. The first three to four years of training, really until I went to Switzerland, I, I, I couldn't figure out, well I, I knew it was an issue, but I'd get bridged over all the time in side control, knee on belly, all this stuff. Like, you know, obviously I'm a smaller guy, but you know, I'd roll with everybody in the room, bigger guys, even guys that suck, they bridge me over. So I, I know what it feels like to be smaller, you know, maybe not have the skill set currently to deal with somebody that's much bigger. And you might never uh, have the ability to stop it. You know, size always matters. <laughs> if, they're, if they're equally as skilled as me, if they bench, you know, 600 pounds, like they're a strong man, they might still be able to stop me. But at least I know what to do. So let go, base wide, and get used to that reaction. It's very common when they do this. There's no... Uh, nothing stopping me from basing and sliding my knee across. And a lot of times they bridge and they open their legs. So anytime someone does that, it's a, I think, a, was it Andrew, uh, Andrew Wilski? He calls that a strategic disconnect, where he's strategically letting go. Because in order to generate like force, you're likely placing both your hands on the mat and pushing off. So what I mean by this is when I'm here, I'm in this tight position, and my base is black. Uh, when Aislinn goes and she tries to bench press me, sorry, that was my example. All right, when she goes, she tries to bench press, she's using her feet on the mat, and it's very likely I can base and slide over. So when someone's creating, you know, force, they're likely pushing off the mat. That's why, you know, stand-up game, there's a lot more kinetic energy, there's, it's a lot more explosive, it's a lot more tiresome, because you're facing off the mat, you're using the mat to explode, What's in the groundwork, it's a lot more isometric and you're using more holding strength. So, just something to think about. Sorry, I'm you guys a lot of talking too much. But uh, newer on, when someone bridges, they just try and roll you over. Just let go, strategically let go of them. Whether it's in side control or it's in a half guard pass. The same thing happens from here. Someone tries to bridge and roll you over. That happens so often. Hey, I'm serious, this is a real issue. You know, you're smaller, you're going, they go to bridge, facing out like so. Like that's helped me out so much the first, again, three years of training, but I didn't really like, didn't really master that until uh, like four years into training, until I went somewhere and I'm like, every day this was happening to me at a stupid MMA gym where I was way better than everyone there, but this guy's constantly doing it to me and I'm like, I am better than this, what can I do to stop this? So strategic disconnecting, jacking the arms overhead, these are two ideas that you guys can take from the seminar and add into your game. Um, really quick, again, for the, the more advanced grapplers, we'll get into the finer details of this position, right? So as I'm coming into this pipe, I make sure that I start from my knee onto the hip, and I'm facing with my head on the mat. I'm circular walking here. From here, it's very likely when we start, Aislinn goes by checking my knee as I start with my T-Rex arm, I just bring it to the inside, and then I slide my knee to the mat. From there, I start to jack overhead. From here, the first go-to, if Aislinn's knees are to the sky or facing me, I easily insert a butterfly hook. You're gonna a strong bite here. I easily insert this, and I get the mat. However, there's gonna be those times where her knees aren't facing me, and I don't feel like I can get purchased. And I feel like I'm putting myself at risk from getting bridge and rolled here, when I start uh, going over this direction. So when their knees are facing this way, I'm not gonna try to butterfly hook. I'm gonna slide this across, and I'm gonna jack this arm up here. From there, I base my head to a head over head position. So head over head, I pipe my hips up, and then I get to the mounted position, like so. At any time, if I feel like I'm gonna lose my balance, I don't have enough base, and they go on a bridging motion, 
I need to let go of my hands, especially um, the far side underhook arm, and you face it out on the mat. I prefer to keep the cross face arm. However, if you go like this, that's better than you know losing position. Any questions here? So yes. Can I just say it one more time? Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of details, a lot of content, some of it conceptual. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, when you're um, bridging up, are you even though you're on your head, are you still using your shoulders into like the neck of the dock? So when I'm bridging up? Sorry, Pardon? when you have your head head over head. Okay. So when I'm here, let's just sit. I went through the whole thing. I reinforced here. I slid this across. I'm pulling a splint in. Mm -hmm. I begin to pike up on my head. Am I still pulling back here? Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't know if you're using your shoulder into her jaw. Yes, yes. Her. So again, it's great to get it underneath the neck, but there's a lot of things we can't control in grappling. The better the grapplers get, just like a boxer, they're going to tuck their chin, and you're going to be working with spinal misalignment. If your partner's uh, naive, they let this up. I'm going to try and choke my partner. So <laughs> it's very common your partner's tucking the chin. I'm using spinal misalignment, but it's the same idea as the choke. I'm pulling Aislinn into me. I'm not thinking about turning her head out. So I don't want to be using muscular tension. I want to be using my balance. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Boom. And then from there, the last part of this, as I came up across here, Aislinn blocks my knee. I seal the inside space by that block. You might be thinking, what if they don't block your knee? Just jack it over head. It's, it's a lot better. <laughs> so from here, as she blocks, I take this away, and then first go to butterfly hook. Second go to her knees are not facing me. I slide my shin across, and then I need to transfer my weight to head over head, point my toe, and slide it through. All right, guys, let's go with it. One, two, three.